The name USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. And no, that's not free public transportation that serves you cornflakes for breakfast, a serial bus, although that would be cool. The real USB was created in 1995 by Intel and six other companies. The idea behind the device was to gather all the cables behind the computer into a simple port. Since its creation, the USB has changed 10 times. There have also been different styles. Producers had to adapt to new devices and the fast pace of technology. That's why the connection had to become speedier and simpler. USB Type-C is the newest type of USB cable. It's a reversible connection that packs higher transfer rates and more power than any other before. The USB paradox happens when people try to plug in their USB devices, but it always takes three tries to get it right. If you see the USB logo on the top of the plug, it's likely the right way to insert it. Eh, no guarantees, though. Over 35 billion mobile devices are connected to the internet today. That's around four devices per person. Interestingly, there are nearly 8 billion people in the world, and more than half of them have a cell phone. At the same time, less than half of the world's population owns a toothbrush. Email was created before the invention of the internet. The first message was sent from computer to computer in 1969. And the internet's official birthday is January 1, 1983. In 1984, sending an email involved using a computer and a rotary phone. It helped you connect to a service called Micronet. At that time, email addresses were a series of numbers and letters. The Firefox logo and the browser's name make you believe it's a fox you can see on the screen. But the creature in the logo is actually a red panda. And the name Firefox is the animal's nickname. Phantom Vibration Syndrome is the feeling that your phone is vibrating when it actually isn't. It's typical for those who spend too much time on their phones. Apple used to have a clothing line in 1986. The Apple Collection, which was his name, was a test to see how loyal their customers were. They also released the first ever Apple Watch. The average household internet speed is around 25 megabits per second. This is enough for day-to-day -day activities like streaming or watching high-quality YouTube videos. Uh -huh. NASA's internet connection runs at 91 gigabits per second. And by NASA standards, that's a bit too slow. The space agency uses ESNet, short for Energy Science Network, to control all its data. In 2010, Google researchers used supercomputers and a special mathematical algorithm. They figured out that a Rubik's Cube could be solved in 20 moves or fewer. The same research also discovered that a standard Rubik's Cube had 43 quintillion – that's 43 and 18 zeros – potential combinations. Glad they're focusing on the important stuff. On average, a computer user blinks 7 times per minute because their eyes have to focus a lot more when looking at the screen. In everyday life, it's usually 20 blinks per minute. That's why, when you stare at the monitor for too long, your eyes feel dry and tired. The first computer mouse was invented in the early 60s. It was called the XY Position Indicator for a display system. In 1968, it was used for the first time to demonstrate word processing, graphics, windows, and other things computers could do at that time. The invention got the name mouse because of the cable sticking out the end of the device reminded the inventor of the rodent's tail. The first photo in the world took 8 hours to expose. It was called View from the Window at Le Grand and was taken at some point between 1826 and 1827. Later, the exposure time was brought down to 15 minutes. But most people didn't smile in photographs because of the need to sit still for so long. Spam mail was named after the canned pork product Spam. It constantly appeared in a popular TV show that went on the air in the 70s. It just kept popping up, like spam emails in your email box. More than 100 billion spam emails get sent and received every day. That's nearly 85% of all the emails sent worldwide. I think most of them land in my inbox. The majority of those emails are advertising, 36%. Out of each 12 million spam emails sent, only one gets answered. Most money is digital these days, with about 90% of it sitting on computer servers. Making digital transactions online, using bank cards, all this involves moving electronic currency from one computer to another. The first product with a barcode was a packet of chewing gum. They wanted to test if it could work on something so small. Norman Woodland invented the barcode all the way back in 1952. But it wasn't until 1974 that the barcode started to be used for product labeling. Known as the Universal Product Code, UPC, it's still in use today. 
Hmm, USB, UPC, USA… Boy, it can get confusing sometimes. Over 2 million people still use AOL's dial-up service in the US. In rural America, it can be expensive and unreliable to get high-speed internet. That's why AOL has kept its dial-up service available to those who need it. Google's first name was Backrub. Later, the founders decided to change it to something a bit catchier. But they accidentally misspelled the word Google while searching for a domain name. Google means one followed by 100 zeros. But the misspelled name stuck. Now, the word Google is even in the dictionary. It means to search on the internet. If you do, you might find out about the comic strip character Barney Google from back in 1919, who may be the real source of the name. Nokia used to sell everything, from toilet paper to car tires, before they started making phones. It happened in the 1980s. That's when the company began to become the biggest producer of mobile phones. The father of the first cell phone, Martin Cooper, made the first public call in 1973. The device he used weighed 2 pounds. The phone could be used for a 30-minute conversation after a 10-hour charge. Martin, who worked for Motorola at that time, called his rival at Bell Labs. The inventor wanted to show the competitors they had been beaten. In 1969, when the Apollo 11 astronauts were going to leave for the moon, they wanted to support their families they were leaving behind. So they signed hundreds of covers. Those were envelopes with autographs, postmarked on important dates, like the day of the launch or landing on the moon. The astronauts' relatives could sell these covers if something went wrong in space. The CDC 6600, considered to be the first supercomputer, broke all computer speeds in 1964. It could perform 3 million operations per second, had more than 100 miles of wiring, and weighed more than 5 tons. There were only 100 such computers made. They held the title for 5 years before the CDC 6700 model came out and beat them. It took 75 years for the telephone to reach 50 million people. It was 38 years for the radio. Television needed just 13 years. The internet managed to become popular within 4 years. It took Instagram a mere 19 months to hit the 50 million mark. Nintendo wasn't always a video game company. They started with making playing cards. The company was founded in 1889, but they didn't start working on their video game systems until 1972. The first television broadcast took place on January 26, 1926. John Logi Baird showed the heads of two dummies. He operated them in front of the camera, but out of the audience's view. By today's standards, the technology he used is old-fashioned. It was soon replaced with more modern methods. Google's first tweet ever was a binary code. It looked like this. If you translate it from binary to English, this means, I'm feeling lucky. Even though it's free to use GPS globally, it costs around $2 million to keep the system in operation every day. The word robot comes from the Czech word robotic, which means servitude. That's because people wanted robots to do the world's most boring and unwanted jobs. Not all computer fonts are equal during printing. If you use lighter fonts that have thinner and tighter letters, like Century Gothic, Calibri, or Times New Roman, it can save your printer a lot of ink over time, especially when compared to a thicker font such as Georgia, Impact, and Webdings. The InSight lander, which is currently on Mars examining the red planet, got into trouble in March 2020. At that time, its digging device, called the Mole, got stuck in Martian soil. After a couple of failed attempts to extract it, NASA engineers encouraged InSight to hit the Mole with its robotic arm. The strategy worked, and the probe was finally free again.